previously on Racing Georgia. So it's Saturday afternoon and we've arrived here at Camp One to start the race tomorrow morning on Sunday at 8 a.m. The race got off to a bit of a rocky start. So this is the last flag we saw right here. But I still managed to finish in second place and it was now time for stage two. I'm in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, competing in a seven-day stage race with Racing the Planet. We're running 250 kilometers through a remote region of the country while carrying all of our food and supplies for the week on our backs. We're doing some pretty fast splits right now. And now on day two, the competition is starting to heat up. Well, it's day two. I'm feeling pretty good. My quads are a little stiff, but uh, I'm sure that'll alleviate itself within the first 15, 20 minutes. It is always the toughest day, though. Um, the packs are still fairly heavy, and uh, you know we're stiff from the first day, and we haven't quite got our rhythm yet. I always find closer to day three, it gets a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, today it's all about just getting started and uh, trusting that we'll feel okay once we start to get moving. I make myself new and so on. Because you melted them on the fire. Yeah. That's right. I saw that. <laughs> So, so, that, yeah. so how do you make them? <laughs> From my uh, sleep. Your sleeping pad. pad. Yeah. Nice. Middle of nowhere, you need to create to be creative. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So for breakfast, I've got uh, strawberry and granola with some uh, powdered milk. Uh, it's about 400 calories, and a little thing of instant coffee, of course. Yesterday was tough. Yesterday was very tough. It would have been very tough under normal, well-executed circumstances, but unfortunately it was not well-executed and you all had a lot to deal with. What we've done is for the first stage from camp to checkpoint one, we've given everyone the time of one hour. And then from checkpoint one to camp, we've taken however many hours it took for you to do that section and then added that hour on top of it. For the men, we have Matthew in third place with the time of 4.24.02. Jeff in second place with the time of 4.20. And Florian leading the pack with the time of 3.41. Florian had managed to take a commanding lead, putting 39 minutes on me, while I only had a four-minute gap on Matthew in third. Magdalena from Germany was in first place for the women's field, with a 13-minute lead on Anam and Nikki, who were tied for second place. Um, it's going to be a mix of dirt roads, grass fields, crops, and a bit of a gravelly uphill for the last two sections. You will have three river crossings. Carlos will give you a bit more details on that. And the first one is just as you uh, get out of camp, you will be getting your feet wet. Georgia has a lot of lakes, and uh, we are going to be passing uh, next to one uh, pretty big one that is called Salka Lake. So after these trees, we will uh, cross a couple of villages. Leaving Camp 2, Stage 2 will first take us past a large reservoir, the biggest in the country. We'll pass through a series of villages and across several creeks before a long climb to Camp 3 at an altitude of close to 2,000 meters, a distance of 46 kilometers with over 1,000 meters of elevation gain. Here we go, stage two, 45K. <laughs> Almost lost my shoe there in the mud. Okay, so we're a couple kilometers in. 
Uh, the body's moving okay. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not too stiff or anything. I am kind of trying to keep them in, within view, but we'll see how long that lasts. First dog. Hey, pup. You always got to stop and walk when you see those dogs. Thanks, guys. He is hammering. I, I, I decided pretty early to just let him. So 11.4 to the next. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thanks for being out here, guys. See ya. Okay, through checkpoint one. Got a couple guys hot on my heels here. Those first couple kilometers were super muddy, but the rest of it was actually pretty dry, so. We're doing some pretty fast splits right now. It's nice. Oh, here come the dogs. Still following me. <laughs> I think I'll wait till I get around this corner to start running. I missed the turn up here. I stayed on the road and I should have cut across. Sorry, I snuck up on you there. I took a wrong turn back there. Oh, okay, well then there we go. How are you feeling? I feel good. Having a good day, good? Yeah, I mean, um, it was a fast start. Yeah, you got a good pace going. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna roll in a little bit at the end, but yeah. Uh, it's been a good day so far and we're at the halfway mark so halfway mark means you're one third done you're looking good man you're moving well well my legs are quite tired but yeah we'll see yeah we'll see. halfway there yep. hey guys okay through checkpoint two at about 23 kilometers um got two more checkpoints but uh 22k to go. Oh, here we go. This will be interesting. Well, I guess there's only one way through.
That actually wasn't too bad. That wasn't too deep at all. Good chance to clean off the shoes. I got a whole bunch of rocks in my shoe at the time. Taking them back on now. I'm just one end. My name is Matt Cavanaugh. Um, I'm from Minnesota in the north of the United States. But the story starts about eight months ago. I donated my left kidney on September 15th of 2021. And within a month, I was jogging again. And uh, that led to a series of events where an organization called the National Kidney Registry has been willing to back me and support me through these events, the Racing the Planet series. When I was younger, um, I caught a news story about someone who had donated a kidney. And th this was an altruistic donation, which is when, you, when the donor does not know the recipient. It means that an organization like the National Kidney Registry can connect donors and recipients and create donor chains. When the National Kidney Registry and I were coming up with a challenge, we picked Racing the Planet's Grand Slam. So this year's Grand Slam consists of Namib, Georgia, Atacama, and Antarctica. And the funny thing about these events is that if I pay attention to my hydration, just like anybody else out here, my one kidney does just as much as what everybody else's two kidneys do. People always ask why. And for me, it's actually a very straightforward answer, which is that at a very minimal risk to myself, I mean, really, the surgery is very non-invasive, not a huge deal. Someone else gets life. In the United States, there's 100,000 people waiting on the transplant list. A thousand of those are kids under the age of 18. 14 people die every day on that transplant waiting list. and we're all walking around with the thing that they need. I, I'm healthy because of running. Running gave me a body that was capable of doing this surgery and helping someone else. Um, and it's, it, it's really, it's been the best thing that I've ever done in my life. I mean, it really has.
guys. Thank you. Challenging climb, but it was it was pretty it was quite beautiful up there. Okay, thanks so much. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you very much. See ya. Thanks for being out here. All right, so we've got about 10k to camp, and it looks like we've got one more big climb to go. Sheep, you know what that means. This is a dog. By this point, I'd figured out a technique to keep the dogs away, which was to bend down and pretend like I was picking up a rock, which seemed to force them to keep their distance. Whoa. And the finish line should be coming up soon. There are the flags over there. Nice. Thank you. Woo. Hey guys. I got connected with the National Kidney Registry and they said, hey, we have a problem, which is that when we do polling, 80% of Americans are under the belief that to donate a kidney is to live a degraded physical life. And the objective here is to fracture this myth that your life is less after you donate a kidney. Because what I'm doing right now is more, more than I've ever done before. Dogs at the finish? Yeah. No more nice dogs? <laughs> Those last ones were oh vicious. Oh my gosh. Hey? Touch, yeah, touch stage. Nine hours, something.
on the next episode of Racing Georgia. Looks like that's our first climb up there up ahead. Oh, I gotta make it in front of these guys. Whoa. Um, it's getting pretty warm. 